in software engineering we are taking chapter number 9 requirements modeling and we'll talk about the scenario based methods so requirement modeling has come from the understanding of requirement requirement gathering requirements analysis so when you have generated the requirement that is what the user want what are the stakeholders requirements then you have to analyze it okay first uh, draft of requirements have to be analyzed and then we have to make the models so the requirement models there are different ways of doing it so this is the first ever technical representation of a system or a software to be built i hope you got the idea so this requirement analysis when it is done which is you can say the refinement and cleaning and you know elaboration of requirements what do we get the first thing we get is what are the software's operational characteristics when it will operate what it what are the functions what are the features then because the software will consist of various system elements various parts how the interfacing will work how they are going to be interfaced and there will be certain constraint like it that is you have to be inside this or you cannot go outside this in both way this requirement analysis establishes the constraints the boundary that the software need to attain and must meet so in all if you see this requirement analysis is all about whosoever like the software engineer the analyst the modeler so this analysis is the elaboration stretching cleaning refinement on the requirement of the requirement which has been established or you got through inception elicitation and negotiation task and these are all the part of what requirements engineering so requirements engineering you are going to analyze it now so there are certain types of models we are going to generate as a requirement uh, engineer because if you make a big big uh, building the models have to be seen so there are various way there are various projects there are various domains different kinds of models can be made for example the scenario based model that is how many actors we have and these actor how do they see the system these actors requirement from the point of view of these actors when we make this this is called scenario based model then we have the class oriented model the class oriented model it defines what will be the class that is the different class we can define the problem and these classes are nothing but uh, objects because objects are the instantiation of the class and these classes these objects what will be the characteristic of each uh, class that is the variable and what are the functions that is the uh, say operations and what are the relationship among different classes that has been found out in class oriented model then the behavioral and pattern based models this shows that if something happens or or some external event some trigger is there how the software is going to behave to act to respond data models because here data is involved so every information domain because the data is different so this is considered here that is in network what is the data and how is this data is going to be presented so this shows how data transform inside the system like the data flow models we are going to make here okay then we have the flow oriented model so this shows how data transform inside the system as i said which data from the data model so the flow oriented model it represents it shows the functional elements of the system and how they transform the data so flow oriented shows how data are transformed by different function while the data transform from one uh, one point to another the functions are involved so this is also being taken care here so on the basis of this requirement modeling the software designer that is the person who is going to design the software he will use these models all of them or few of them 
for the design purpose for example architectural interfacing component level designs this will be done by the on the basis of or from the help from these all requirement modeling so requirement modeling or requirement engineering for example you are making or you have created a software requirement specification once you have done this will be helpful to you also and the customer or the stakeholder that is the quality of of the software can be assessed the quality can be verified validated by the means of the requirement model which has been created let us say we have created srs software requirement specification so for the requirement modeling or requirement understanding what is the primary focus when we are actually doing the analysis modeling this is a uh, base the based on the question what not how we are not going into the detail we are just saying what what is required what is the user requirement what is we are going to do so we don't go to the implementation detail or how so whenever we are making a requirement model there are certain objectives there are certain goals so three primary objectives have to be seen first is what the customers require and once you make the requirement model this is the basis for the software design this will be the basis and once the requirements are ready these can be validated once the software is created built and delivered now you see here this analysis model is actually a bridge or a it fills a gap between the system level description and the software design that is when you describe what the proper system uh, things and you go to the design you cannot directly jump from what you have uh, got from the user and go to the design model no you have to make certain analysis model so this is the bridging of the gap all the elements of the requirement model will be shall be directly traceable to the parts of the design model that is requirement model is the basis of the design model design can only come when you have a proper analysis model of the requirements which you gathered in the requirement engineering okay so these this analysis model and disk disk design model they have certain things in common what does it mean there is some interaction intersection point so some analysis will be conducted during the design and some design will be conducted during the analysis okay analysis will have some part of the design and design will have some part of the analysis that is why we are saying these are quite close thing design can only come when you have a good analysis model so when you do the requirement analysis requirement modeling there are rules of thumb given by various uh, various giants in the software engineering field for example arlo and newstat they gave the rules of thumb for creating the analysis model that is the requirement analysis model what are they first thing first is the model you are creating they should focus on the highest level that is the requirement that are visible within the business domain the work the job the business for which you are making the software the level of abstraction should be very high you have to think a full full software as whole don't go into the, uh, the details here the level of abstraction can be high here only talking about the business domain which will be visible uh, clearly to the user each element of the requirement model need to add some 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 kind of additional thing plus to the uh, understanding of software requirement for example the software this analysis model you have made from certain requirements the analysis model why you are making you are adding certain things to requirement then only it is uh, good for example if i write, if i write 2 by 3 now you will ask is it the address of some house when i write 2 divided by 3 so 2 by 3 has come from the requirement and 2 div 3 has come from the requirement model or, or analysis model so whenever we are going to the third point is whenever you we want to go to inside like the infrastructure like the design details like the non functional models until design we can we can delay it no need to discuss all these things here and we have to minimize the coupling throughout the system because while while we are doing this analysis model there are different parts subsystem part so they we need to see that 
the close relationship should not be there. We need to have as less coupling as possible. Okay. If you're making two class, they need to have as less coupling as possible. Then, as I said, the requirement model needs to provide some value to the stakeholder. Because if you have written requirement and you have not done anything for the analysis model, what are you giving? What are you? Why are you doing this analysis model? It has to add certain values, some pluses to the stakeholders. And the most important is keep it simple. You may be technically very advanced, but the people for whom you are making the software, it needs to be as simple so that the designer can understand, coder can understand, tester can understand. The maintainer can understand and also you can understand. Domain analysis. Domain is all about the field you are working. For example, you are, you are working in computer science. Computer science is a domain. Now, networking in computer science is another domain. Right? In network, I am working with switches. Another domain. So, this is the domain you are talking about. That is the actual piece of work where the software is going to be implemented and executed and will be worked upon. Now here comes the analysis pattern. That is solving very common problems. Every software developer who has got experience, he knows that certain things will come up again and again. So once we create the analysis model of already known common problems such as analysis patterns we are calling it, we can use it. Because in networking, you know the TCP IP socket or pipe or whichever way you, IPC you have to use. We know the common problems. These are called the analysis pattern. And once you use the analysis pattern, it becomes because it becomes very easy to understand that the design patterns and the software component can be applied. Because this design pattern and software components will expedite, will increase the value and you know make your software see to, to the market and the cost will be reduced. What I'm trying to suggest here is using the analysis pattern, consequently the design pattern and software component will improve the time to market and reduce the development cost. Now the question comes, how are analysis pattern and class recognized? Who is going to define them? Who is going to categorize them? Who will uh, do it for the subsequent project? Because this is not the only project your company may be handling. So who is going to find out this analysis pattern and the classes? Okay. This can be applied to subsequent project. This, so we need to define it. There has to be someone. So thus that guy is called as the domain analyst and the work he does is domain analysis. So Firesmith, he described his domain analysis in certain ways. He says that the software domain analysis is the finding out, identification, analysis and specification of the common requirement for a specific application domain, as I suggested, networking switches. And these are typically for reuse on the multiple project within that application domain. A networking company, software company can have multiple projects on networks. So software domain analysis is all about finding so that it can be used, reused in different application domain, right? So it is all about identification analysis and specification of common requirement. When you specifically go to object oriented domain analysis, here we are trying to find out what? What will be the classes? What will be the objects? What will be the sub assemblies? Sub classes, you can say. What are the frameworks? So, this is the domain analysis. Okay. So there are two things reuse and then applying it to multiple projects. What is the goal? What is the, say, endpoint you want to achieve? First, you want to create or to find or create those analysis classes or patterns that may be reused. So main thing is reusing and finding out the analysis class and pattern. So this domain analysis is not only pertaining to this requirement modeling. It is, a, it is an umbrella activity. For the whole software development life cycle, this activity will be carried out. For example, a domain analysis. You can consider him to be equal to a master toolsmith. If there is a very heavy manufacturing environment, say car making, then there will be a toolsmith. Now the job of toolsmith is what? He will design and build tools and give it to you or give it to people who are doing similar kind of job, but not the same job. That is, they are in different pro pro projects and they are doing similar kind of work. So he will make the tool once 
and he will give one to one project team one to another project team so this is the domain analysis so if you see here what are the inputs and the outputs you are going to going to get how do you get to do the domain analysis what are the inputs the final will be the domain analysis model so the sources can be immense it can even come from say let me let us take an example it is a medical science field you are making a software so what will be the technical literature what are the applications which are already being used by the company or the other companies for the safe space same thing you can use the medical science people doctors and and the and the other uh, you know supporting people to get the customer survey you can get the expert device or the current or future requirement finally you will get the result as class taxonomies reuse standards functional models and the domain languages these will be the outputs finally you will get the domain analysis model so there are different approaches in requirement modeling these approaches what are the you know the product will be different the way will be different first approach is the structured analysis structure analysis is all about functions so here it considers the data and the processes that is the functions as different entities they are not in a capsule like object oriented so data object will define their attributes and the relationships okay so processes are model in such a manner that they will show how they transform the data this is structured analysis basically the functional way of programming functional way of understanding the structural way of understanding and when it comes to object oriented analysis this is focusing on the classes classes will give the give rise to objects and these classes what they are going to collaborate how they are they are going to be worked upon so that the customer requirements can be fulfilled let me more exemplified using the detail structured is the methodology is conventional way software development life cycle like the waterfalls like the spirals object oriented the methodology is iterative and then can be maintained when we talk, talk about focus structured is processes it is focusing on processes object oriented focusing on the objects when we talk about risk in structured it is quite high object oriented it is low reuse very less in structured very high in object oriented the structured way of uh, requirement modeling is mature and widespread object oriented still emerging but now it is also mature and widespread when your project is well defined these requirements are well defined structured way of approach you can use but when the projects are large and the requirements are ever changing you have to use the object oriented so if you see the analysis design in structured you will create analysis model as dfds structured english uh, er uh, analysis and when you come to object oriented use case activity flow of events mainly the uml diagrams in the design there will be different as way of db design ui design like this in object oriented there will be a proper way there will be an architecture there will be design classes and how they we can combine the classes eliminate the classes split the classes what are the components we are going to use this is how we will go after the object oriented so these are the two requirement modeling approaches the software requirement is the center point here and when we talk about requirement mod modeling approaches each element of the requirement model has to present problem from a different view different mode different eyes different point of view so basically we are just taking the software requirement and then we we are making certain model okay the so main idea is different perspective and these all are models being created for example scenario based model this is showing how the user interact with the system and the sequence of activity that occur the flow of activity that occur as the software is used by certain actor or certain people so in scenario based you will create use cases use stories in class based uh, element or this model the objects that is the of course the functions that will be manipulating these so relationship between the classes objects collaboration with, uh, between the classes will be shown here for example class diagram collaboration diagram when behavioral elements you are going to make this will show how external events ex external triggers change the state of the system you will make the state diagram sequence diagram flow oriented model it shows the data objects how they are performed uh, transform as they flow through various system functions you will make dfds that is the data flow diagrams the data models in the flow models so these are different way of modeling and analysis modeling 
lead to the derivation of all of these or few of these modeling elements. It depends on you, you want to create use cases or DFDs. So in scenario based modeling, we are actually talking about the use case diagram, the other diagram supporting it. So the success of any product is measured in terms of quality that is user satisfaction. If the actors, the end users or the people who are going to interact with the system, if it is well understood how they are interacting, now the software team can easily find out, characterize and prioritize the requirement and on the basis of these, they can build the analysis and design model. So in requirement modeling or analysis modeling, these are the pictures which we are going to discuss. What are they? So in requirement modeling, we start with UML. UML is the de facto standard, industry standard unified modeling language for making different kind of scenarios in form of use cases, activity diagrams and swim lane diagram. So the first one you see is the use cases. Second one is the activity diagram and the third one you see is the swim lane diagrams. How to create a use case? So Alistair Cogman, he is a very you know renowned person in software engineering field. So he said that a use case is a contract for behavior. That is a use case is going to capture the interaction between the user and the software that is the producer and the consumer of information and the system itself that is if you take a picture that is the you capture one kind of interaction between your system and the other stakeholders and also the state of the system that is a use case. So it is called a use case. You can call it as usage scenario. So we will try to develop a proper use case, which is actually the analysis modeling. Requirement modeling give rise to analysis modeling. Analysis modeling is all about creating these models. So use case is describing a specific usage scenario from a point of view of an actor. There can be multiple actors. How does an actor see or how does an actor interact? That usage scenario is a use case. Now the question comes, what to write in the use case? How much we have to write? How detailed you have to write? That is, what are the description you have to give? So all these have to be organized also. So how to organize the description? So what to write about? Whenever you are writing a use case, see, if you remember the requirement engineering process, the first two requirement engineering tasks that were inception and the elicitation. And this are the basis of use cases. The so inception task, elicitation task will give you the information for making use case. Along with this, there are other methods we discussed that is the requirements gathering meetings. Then we have the QFG, quality function deployment, QFD. This can also be used, there are various methods. So we use it to first of all identify the stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders who are going to use it? We have to define the scope of the problem. That is the what the problem or software want to achieve. Then what are the goals, operational goals? What do you want to do with this software or the system? And then priorities which has to be made earlier which has to be made later and the functional requirements. What are the work tasks you are supposed to get from the completion of this software? And then the things, because we are talking about object oriented, so we'll talk about object. So these objects that are going to be worked upon and manipulated by the system. Okay. So these along with these other things are the information you'll get. So in order to develop a use case, all the function, feature, activity, which is performed by a specific actor, I'm telling you, we have multiple actors. 
So for a specific actor, what are the functions and activities? How do you, how do you get it? You can converse with. You can talk with that stakeholder. And then you can develop various diagrams as a part of requirements modeling. What to write about? So if you remember, this safe home is actually a software or a system for surveillance of home. That is, we want our home to be safe. That is, here we are talking about the cameras. Now just understand that we have an actor, say homeowner. Now if you want to have a surveillance system, what will you do? You will select a camera to view. Then you would like to see all the thumbnails uh, or the view from all the cameras. Then you would like to display camera views in say a PC, personal computer or a laptop. You can also pan and zoom a specific camera. And then you can selectively record also. There are multiple cameras because some one camera will be in your LA, one ca camera will be in your parking. So recording can be done, the recording can be replayed. And you can also access camera surveillance using the internet. That is wherever you are sitting across the globe, you can access your home cameras. This is the surveillance system. Now, when you talk with the uh, stakeholder, here we are talking about the homeowner, whosoever is playing the role of the homeowner. When the conversation, the talk, the requirement gathering take place, use case for each function will be noted down. This is what you have to write about. So this is, see, I'll tell you what he is going to say. And I'll tell you also what you are going to, to get out of what he has said. The use case for each function is to be noted. So let us take an example of the last one, which is, these are the different uh, identified function. So access camera surveillance via the internet. Now this function, let us say we, we are going to make the use case for this function. Let us name it ACS DCB, ACS for access camera surveillance and DCB for display camera views. So this is the function we are talking about and we are going to make a use case out of it. Now we'll talk, we'll have a conversation with the user. Now we'll ask him, just give you an idea what do you want. Now what does he want? What are the order of the sequence of the user action? So we'll start with the use case name. We have decided the name. It has to be the name which everyone can understand. You can understand and the people who are going to, uh, you know, later use it should also understand. So it is accessing the camera of your house from a remote location from, from say, your, your uh, house is in America, you are viewing it from Canada. Now the actor is a homeowner. The actor is homeowner. We are talking about just one actor, you have to do it for every actor. Different kind of functions. So he says like this. If I am at a re remote location, I can use my PC with appropriate browser, software, say, say any, you know, Chrome, etc. to log on to this Safe Home Products website. So the Safe Home company is making a product and for that he is, uh, the, the product can be accessed through website. I enter my user ID and two levels of passwords and once I'm validated, I have access to all functionality for my installed safe home system. See, he is just uh, narrating. He is also saying to access a specific camera view, I select surveillance from the major functions button display. He also says, I then select a Pika camera and the floor plan of the house is displayed. Because the house can be multiple floor, you can have a basement also. Then he says, I think select the uh, camera that I am interested in. It can be any camera. Or alternatively, he's saying I can look at thumbnail snapshots for all cameras simultaneously by selecting all cameras as my viewing choice. So this is the narration he is giving a homeowner. This is a communication we are having with him. He also says once I choose a camera, I select view and one frame per second view appears in a viewing window that is identified by the camera ID. So you want to see each of the camera and he wants to see in a particular rate also. If I want to switch cameras, I select pick a camera and the original viewing window disappears and the floor plan of the house is displayed again. He wants to see kitchen, he wants to see parking. 
I then select the camera that I am interested in and a new viewing window appears. So this is how he has narrated to us, he has told to us as a requirement gatherer or the analysis analyst. Now as we are revisiting the same use case which is we have called as ACS DCV. This is the function. Now how do we write the narration? So whatever he has disclosed to us, we will try to first write all these content in the declarative sentence one by one. The use case, now I am writing exactly same thing with sentences as declarative sentences. That is, first same thing I am writing, same thing. The homeowner logs onto the safe home products website. The homeowner enters his or her user ID. The homeowner enters two passwords. Now we have added our thing, at least eight characters. The system displays all major function buttons. This we have added by ourselves. The homeowner selects the surveillance from the major function buttons. Homeowner picks, selects pick a camera. The system displays the floor plan of the house. The homeowner selects a camera icon for, for, from the uh, floor plan. The homeowner selects the view button and the system displays a viewing window that is identified by the camera ID and the system displays video output with the viewing window at one frame per second. So this is the narration and what we have written is just free flowing. It has no interaction alternatives. That is, it has no catering of ifs and buts. That is, what if this is not done? What if that happens? This has not been taken care. Okay. So this kind of narration is called the primary scenarios. Use case of these type free flowing without any alternatives or interaction alternatives are referred to as primary scenarios. So all these branching, looping, if else, switch, this is not catered up till now. That is why we are calling it as a primary scenarios. Now, the second step. So the description of this alternative scenarios or interaction is very much important, essential for complete understanding of the function described by a use case because the use case will not be complete. So we need to develop this primary scenario. We need to ask certain questions because this is just a narration. We have written it in the form of declarative sentences. Now the, the interactions, alternative. Can the actor take some other action at this point? Is it possible that the actor will encounter some error condition at this point? If yes, what it might be? Is it possible that the actor will encounter some other behavior at this point? That is some outside event, some trigger, which is beyond the control of actors. What will happen? What will be the behavior? If it is tr true, what it might be? So now we have to develop a secondary scenario. All these is the primary scenario. Now I'm taking the example of 6 and 7 for example. 6 and 7 we will try to develop the secondary scenario. Others all we have to do. Just I want to just uh, you know keep it uh, summarized so I'm just taking two of them. So we will be doing this secondary scenario for this primary scenario which was already taken from the narration from the user. User is the homeowner. So 6 and 7, the 6th way is the homeowner selects Pika camera. The 7th one is the system displays the full floor plan of the house. Now the question is, can the actor take some other action at this point? The answer is absolutely yes, because actor can do so many things. Actor may choose to view thumbnails, snapshot, all at the same time, all cameras simultaneously. So the homeowner selects a pick a camera and he wants to see all of them. So now we have a new scenario added. That is view thumbnail snapshot for all cameras. This is the new thing which has come up from answering the next question. The, the other question is, is it possible that the actor will encounter some error condition at this point? The answer is yes. There can be multiple error condition. What can it be? A floor plan with the camera icons may have never been configured. What does it mean? Every house is different, one floor, two floor, three floor, every house, the installation of the cameras are different. So first you have to configure these, this, uh, these camera 
according to the floor plan, then only you can go to the next step. Okay. How can you pick a camera when the camera is not even configured? I hope you got the idea. So selecting pick a camera will result in uh, an exception or you can say an error condition. Then that can be no floor plan configured for this house or no camera planning is done up till now. These are the alternatives. These are the interactive alternatives. So the secondary scenario we are making. One more question I said we need to ask. Is it possible that the actor will encounter some other behavior at this point? Yes. There may be alarm condition. For example, you know, this all is security, security scenario. So there will be an alarm. So uh, depending upon the type, the location of the camera, the system action, there are number of, uh, you know, the actor will be provided with number of options. It can be relevant to different kind of an alarm or nature of alarm. Now, because of the complexity of this situation, we cannot just solve it here because we have to see the different kinds of permutation and combination. We have to make a separate use case and that is called alarm condition encounter. I hope you got the idea. The answering of this question has created a new separate use case because it has multiple scenarios that can be made and use case is all about capturing a scenario. So alarm condition encountered will be a different use case. So what we saw here is error we are calling len. Now let us call it as exception. Exception is just, just that if some condition fail or actor is taking some alternative path, alternative he has chosen. So once he choose, there's a different behavior of the system. Once he choose this, there is a different behavior. That is an exception. So now we have to note the exception. We have to handle this uh, exception. And then we have to write what are the alternative scenario we have we are going to write in order to handle the exception or the problem or the error or the failure or the alternative we have got after discussing this. And in, in various cases, even the exception will develop another use case as we just saw alarm condition encountered. Okay, so the scenario can be created even from the exception. So we have to make new use case accordingly. Let us take an example. If you are dealing, if you are sitting in say Canada accessing your home at US, maybe the web-based interface is too slow. You are clicking so many buttons now. So here, uh, how to do this? Because there are the problems which multiple problems can arise. So Cogburn, uh, he recommends there has to be a brainstorming session because we need to take out, we need to derive all set of exception for each and every use case. So the questions here or the, the content here is are these cases in which some validation function occur during this use case? The validation function is there that may fail, that may pass. Are there cases in which a supporting function or actor will fail to respond appropriately? Because you are accessing the website to a remote location. So there can be multiple scenarios, multiple questions being asked, which Cogburn has recommended. Validation function, some supporting function failed, or can poor system performance can cause the improper uh, or unexpected way. Say you have made a safe home software, but if you're accessing from, because you are bound by various, uh, say technologies and techniques and uh, browser, etc. You have to see that also. Now, how to write a formal use case? Because a use case, if it is involved, it is involving critical activity where we have number of exceptions, we need to have a formal approach. This is the template we have to use. We have to write, you, you cannot just narrate and write certain things. You have to use a formal approach and it is always better you have to use a use case template and write a formal use case. So the ACS DCV uh, function, the formal use case will be written like this. You will write a use case. You will write also the iteration. What are the primary actors? What is the goal in context? The goal is it is it will identify the overall scope of that particular use case. 
what this use case want to achieve to view output of camera placed throughout the house from any remote location via the internet this is the goal then what is the uh, precondition the precondition is telling what is known to be true before the use case is initiated this has to be done so that the other things can be done so the precondition can be system must be fully configured and username and password all these have to be also configured what are the, what are the triggers the homeowner decides to take a look inside the house while away that is what actually created that this this use case to happen sometimes you want to see your house what is happening this is the trigger scenario the scenario are the all the points which i discussed just now okay the scenario is all the action required by the actor and the appropriate software or the system responses then comes the exceptions these are the scenario or situation these are which will refine your use case exceptions are the not the failures these are the exceptions which will refine your system like if else alternative interaction scenarios or the options we are going to choose because there will never be a straight road in your life there will be multiple roads you have to choose all of them in your software development so this diagrammatic representation unified modeling language can be used wherever your scenario is complex better is to use the uml now you see here this is the use case now here we have a use case diagram the left is a use case diagram here you have the the actor and the oval that is the you know egg shaped figure is the use case access camera serverless via serverless via the internet camera is also interacting which is the external home owner is external so the use case is an oval access camera surveillance via the internet use case is focusing on the functionality and what are the software behavior requirement with respect to this use case or user action non functional requirements are not catered here please understand this use case is not good for or not appropriate for nfrs or non functional requirement so just have a look this is the use case and there are multiple things others we have other also we have to write now developing a an activity diagram use case already been made there are some supplement additional uh, diagrams which can help the use case that is if uh, i told you if you get 5000 rupees you will buy a shoe if you get 2000 you will buy a shirt so there are so many scenarios there are so many flow of interaction so the activity diagram will add your use case because this activity diagram will represent show the flow of interaction within a specific scenario multiple options this is just this activity diagram is just like a, a flow chart we have already seen the activity diagram here you see the rounded rectangles this is showing a specific system function why we are calling it at, as a rounded rectangle because this is rounded at the corners and it is all about writing this specific system function okay then what are the arrows they are representing the flow through the system what will be the next step what is the decision uh, these are there are diamonds these are decision diamonds and these are the branching uh, decisions and every uh, arrow needs to be labeled arrow is showing the path labeled and the solid horizontal lines for parallel activities the multiple ways we present it sometimes we write this uh, horizontal lines we draw and then inside this we write various parallel activities i'll show you parallel activities here so these are the different uh, figures normally used round uh, circle with a, a bold circle that is the end so activity diagram is additional whatever is implied by use case we add it to the the activity diagram for example just see an example user can uh, give the user id and password but in use case we have not talked about how many number of times if you see here in activity diagram 
when we are prompting for re-entry, username, password is entered, we are prompting for re-entry. That is, how many times he has to enter? If he fails, then number of times, 4 times, 5 times, 10 times, whatever you want to give. So, this condition is given in the activity diagram. So, entering password, if valid password, it is okay, we can select the major function. If it is invalid password, then we have to be prompted for re-entry. If we are selecting major function, then we go to select surveillance. Then we have the either thumbnail views or select a specific scenario. These are two and these two, two of the functions here are the parallel activities. So selecting camera icon and selecting specific camera thumbnails are the parallel activities because they work together. Finally, we view camera output in the label window and then prompt for another view. If you want to see again, then we loop back again to the diamond above. Otherwise, we exit this function. This is we are we have added an activity diagram to use case. Now comes the swim lane diagram. This is uh, nothing but a variation of activity diagram only. So I'm not saying you have to make all the diagram. I'm just saying that these are the additional diagrams that will enhance, emancipate the uh, description of your use case. So this represents the flow of activity. This uh, Swim lane diagram represents the flow of activities which is actually described by your use case. At the same time, it will indicate which actor or analysis class has responsibility for the action. I'm just talking about the classes. We'll be talking later in detail. But what classes you have defined or identified or the actor has the responsibility for this action. And the responsibilities are presented in the parallel segments that we divide the diagram vertically. I'll show you. Now, if you are, say, into swimming, you know there are lanes. These are the parallel segments that we have divided in the diagram vertically. This, these are different swim lanes. And each swim lane is representing a class or an actor. So, what is the responsibility of, of which class is to name? Homeowner, camera, interface, this responsibility. So this is like the lanes in a swimming pool. Let us assume we have defined or found out three classes. Homeowner, camera and interface. Interface is nothing but the user interface. Interface class will represent the user interface as seen by the homeowner. What you do? So something will come up. That will be the prompt for re-entry. Prompt for another review. This will be interface is going to be. So just take an example that the act activity diagram, let us say you will get two prompts and that will be the responsibility of the interface, user interface. Let me show you, prompt for re-entry and prompt for another view. So you have the prompt for re-entry, this will only come when you enter the wrong password. And there is one more, the, in the lower part if you see, prompt for another view. So in swim lower, enter username password. If it is okay, if it is okay. We go to select major function. This is one modern one. But if invalid password is there, the interface will take place and that will be prompt for re-entry. And it will again go back to the homeowner if it is expecting again. So valid, select major function, invalid interface will again re-prompt. Number of times, say five times you have allowed it, a user. So this will go for five times. So now this interface is a swim lane diagram. There is one more part here. As I was just uh, suggesting, the prompt for another view. Now, when you have the, you know, if he is want to see thumbnail or a specific camera, there are parallel activity. When the generating the output video is the camera activity. The camera class will take care of generating the output video. Now, view camera output in labeled window. window. So, this is the homeowner activity, but it will go to the interface because the prompt will come in the user interface. Okay. To prompt for another view and if see another camera it will again go back to that diamond otherwise it will exit this function. So this is the work of interface. So what we have seen here is these the swim lane uh, interface or interface swim lane these prompts and the decision associated will fall under this category in this swim lane. Okay.
but they are going back to home owner swim lane where the home owner actions occur so we have use cases then we made the the supplement and then we made the another supplement swim lane diagram okay this is all about the scenario based modeling thank you so much take care of yourself